So here's Al again. Uh, I got interrupted by some uh, contractor that I got coming in to uh, pour some uh, concrete pads that I need. But I essentially, uh, uh, kind of forgot where I was at. But uh, here's a Flex Max, uh, Flex Max controllers already uh, installed. They're not connected yet. And uh, let's see kind of what's going on here so you guys get a, get a good feel for it. So this here is the controller from my hardware freight panels. You can see it's floating right now. And those panels, as I was saying earlier, are connected in, in series of four. So I have four panels in series. Uh, each one is about, you know, I think they're 20 point some odd, about 21 volts open circuit. So in ideal conditions, uh, under full sun, I would get 84 volts. Right now I'm getting somewhere around 80, I guess, 79. You can see it fluctuating. And 0.2 amps. Well, why 0.2 amps? Because the higher the voltage, the smaller the wire size you need. So I was actually able to run number 10 gauge wire from the roof down to here, and that's about a 50 foot run. Had I uh, used the regular 20 volt uh, open circuit going down to 12, uh, I would have needed some uh, number two wire coming down here to stay less uh, with less than 5% voltage loss. So uh, by connecting the, the panels in series, I was able to raise the voltage that high and look at the amperage now, it's only 0.2. So when it goes out though, it converts it down to 13.6 is what, what my batteries are at this point. And it's at one and a half amps, which are, they're charged up and I'm floating. Now, if you look at the sky out there, let me kind of show you what's going on outside. I mean, it's all cloudy, it's raining. As you can see, uh, you know, it's all, everything's wet. Uh, so we're not getting any, any decent sunlight at all. We all are overcast. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us a couple of things. A, for being as overcast as it is where there's no shadows, uh, those hardware freight panels are pretty good. Those amorphous panels, a lot of people knock them down. I don't because uh, they're extremely efficient at converting sunlight. Uh, as you can see, my voltage is, is right at where it needs to be if it was in full sunlight. And I've seen when I'm using the power from this uh, battery bank, I've seen when it's not in flow charge, when I'm actually uh, uh, using a power, uh, I've seen that amperage goes up to 35 amps so i'm getting uh i'm getting a lot of power of those 500 420 watts uh of solar freight uh, uh or hover freight panels and a lot of people knock them out i don't uh because of one simple reason imagine if you would you get a tornado and you got debris flying around and some of that debris smashes one of your panels let's say that you get hail and that hail busts one of two other panels well if i break one or two panels I lose 15 watts on about $50. On the other hand, if I get hail or debris and breaks one of my sharp 205 watt panels, I'm out 700 and some odd dollars. So the price per watt on the Harbor Freight panels may be higher, but there are certainly a lot of advantages from a safety standpoint and hedging your bets against an accident that they provide you that the bigger panels can't, cannot. Now, when you find real good bargains like like those DuPont uh, panels up there that are 100 watts, you know, 100 volts, and they get, and they're only a dollar, you know, dollar twenty, dollar fifty a watt. I mean, I paid a hundred dollars, hundred and twenty dollars for each one of those panels. So that's a dollar twenty a watt, and that's a hell of a good price. So if that goes out, well, I'm a hundred bucks, and I'm also at a hundred watts. Uh, but unless you get a deal like that, those Harbor Freight. Uh, panels actually do make an awful lot of sense. So those DuPont panels are going to get tied into these charge controllers. Because I'm rewiring my battery bank to 24 volts, uh, I mean, I'm going to be adding another 10 batteries here. So we're going to have 20 batteries all, to hit, all together, 2,500 amp hour reserve capacity. Um, here's my diesel fader, by the way. It's connected all the time. So my batteries are gonna usually last, uh, you know, three three times normal, you know, what they would. So let's say that these uh, real um, 
uh, deep cycle batteries from interstate, uh, you know, they're warranted, uh, they have a three year warranty, but let's say that they last normally four or five years. Well, with that diesel fader in place, I expect them to last anywhere from 10 to 15 years, and they could even last longer. What kills the battery is the sulfation of the plate as you charge and discharge. The, only, the other thing that kills the battery is how thick the plates are. Now, these are not the hybrid, you know, cranking slash uh, deep cycle. These are actually deep cycle batteries, and when I compare the weight on these batteries to the 6-volt batteries uh, you know, that you can get at uh, Sam's Club, for example, uh, that are 220 amps, uh, these compare extremely favorably to it. So, on a weight basis, that tells you, you know, how, how thick those plates are. So... Uh, although, of course, two of those 6-volt batteries weigh more than uh, w one of these, this one battery uh, weighs uh, quite a bit more on a, on a uh, capacity basis than those 6 volts. So they are actually pretty good. You just got to do the math behind it and really got to analyze what you're purchasing, and you can get some really good deals. And that, those are the 29 DC series uh, uh, batteries from uh, Interstate. Uh, anyways, <coughs> as you can tell, I'm rewiring everything. So I have my uh, Turbine 1, Turbine 2 charge controller, turbo Turbine 1 uh, amp meter. There's the uh, uh, disconnect breaker for it. Uh, turbine 2 charge controller, Turbine 2 amp meter plus the um, uh, breaker. And these are going to be the Winmax uh, turbines. I'm going to put two towers instead of one. Each tower is going to be about 40 feet tall. And uh, I'm going to put um, uh, a third turbine, uh, which is uh, one of those wind blue PMAs uh, with some uh, uh, decent blades that I'm going to or also order from Winmax. They make a set of blades that are 7 feet, that are 6.8 feet, that I've seen in other videos, and those are, I think, the best I've ever seen. So I'm just going to use a, a, a hub that I found uh, for, you know, the Raptor blades, I guess, uh, which is a good, really good hub that Jeff Molly sent. It's about a quarter-inch steel. It's the best I've seen. And actually, I order, already ordered one and got it, and I put these Raptor blades on it, but I think I'm just going to change uh, that out for the Winmax blades. And actually, you can see, uh, you see that? Uh, turbine over there that's kind of sitting sideways that has the quarter inch uh, hub from uh, Jeff Molly from uh, Missouri Wind and Solar and he's wrapped the blades in but I'm just going to change the, the blades out because those blades are I mean they're good if you have a lot of wind but when you have you know average 12 mile an hour winds they just don't start early enough where the wind max blades from what I've seen will do the trick and I'm 100% I'm confident in that company, uh, the Winmax uh, products are, uh, I think they're just the best. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure this, this wind blue and, and uh, you know, the, the turbines from uh, uh, Jeff Molly and uh, Mr. Wind and Solar are also really good turbines. I mean, there's, they, they actually work very well. In my specific uh, part of the world with all these trees around and and the, the average wind that I get, yeah, you know, they, they, they don't make as much power as I, as I would get. Plus, the Winmax towers, you get the charge control built in. They come as part of the kit. I don't have to buy them. And they also come with, you know, the blades and all that. So it's, it's really a better deal, I think. Uh, at any rate, uh, this week is going to be a busy week. I'm going to I'm gonna get um, uh, some uh, electricians come in and help me with this wiring here. This is going to get all cleaned up. Uh, I decided not to use this obviously because I'm changing the battery back to from 12 to 24 and this is a 12 volt so I'll probably put this on eBay uh, although this is a, I mean this is a great uh, great animal here it, it weighs about 60 pounds it's got a automatic transfer switch built into it and it has a 100 amp uh, I believe um, battery charger built into it uh, it is 2 kilowatts it will go to 3 kilowatts for an hour and up to 4 kilowatts for 30 minutes. So this thing is an animal. Uh, I mean, it's really, really good, but it's 12 volts. Uh, and then this is my 12 volt pure sun inverter, which uh, I might keep this around because I may make another circuit with those batteries. Uh, maybe I'll use the, the wind blue PMA to have a separate bank or something else. Uh, so I order a, uh, a different... Uh, 
uh, inverter uh, to come over here. It's a five kilowatt inverter, modified sine wave, and it has obviously the 120 single phase output. And that's gonna go to this animal here. This guy here will take, does take the 120 single phase output con and converts it to two, the, the two phase uh, or two legs, uh, 120 volts. So it gives you a 240 volt uh, output and then that will feed the house. And then I have a transfer panel, automatic transfer panel that we're gonna mount in here uh, that'll run 11 circuits in the house here. This is a dump, uh, a dump load that I'm also gonna use in, in the different setup that, that'll, uh, that'll go on later. And the uh, charge controller from uh, Coleman Air, which is excellent. Uh, so this guy, this guy are made for, right now this is a 12 volt, uh, uh, dump load controller. So I'm going to keep those two separate, and I'm going to use those ba those batteries after I recondition them, and use them with a wind blue PMA to power some essential circuits that I want all the time uh, on those things. Um, so that's uh, I guess that's it for now. I'm going to do some additional work, uh, but I got to get some wire to uh, wire these uh, battery bank in series parallel. Right now they're all in parallel. So as you can see, positive to positive, negative to negative. So once uh, I get the, the right uh, four gauge wire, I'm gonna go two in parallel, then the positive to the negative here, and that will make this bank and this bank in series, right? Uh, so the positive to the negative there, and then that'll leave me that negative there, and that negative uh, there, uh, you know, will go to the positive of the next one up. So uh, essentially, we're just gonna continue that until uh, I get this back to put out 24 volts. Uh, and that's it for now. I'm not gonna ramble anymore. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope that. Uh, uh, Y'all are getting some usefulness out of this, and I'll talk to you later.